You are a glory of glorious God. We bow before your throne this afternoon, before the one who sits in heaven, and the earth is his footstool. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, our Father, as we sit in your presence this afternoon. Speak a word in season to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for those watching us online. Let the entrance of your word bring light also to their hearts and cause understanding to be granted in Jesus' name. Yeah. We'll give you praise. It's in Jesus' precious name we have worshipped. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat> praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. We welcome you again to Church of God Mission. International Heritage Assembly. We are at 4601 Sunnybrook Drive, Rolex, Texas 75088. God's servant, our Archbishop, has declared this month the month of supernatural help, focusing on Christ. For supernatural help. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in the course of the month, we started lecturing on what is the supernatural and how can we access the supernatural. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We did give definitions to the supernatural and we pointed out last Sunday the first criteria for access to the supernatural. And if we remember what we talked about, we said that the first thing anybody who would have direct access would have to possess is the thing called hunger. Hallelujah. Amen. A task for the supernatural. Do not forget that we laid the foundation that every child of God is born into Christ and as such you are born into the supernatural. But the manifestation thereof is a different thing. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible says the endless expectation of the creator waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now it's not that the sons of God are not there. They are there. But the manifestation of it is what the creature is waiting for. We have access to the supernatural, but the manifestation of that supernatural is what we are talking about. Making the supernatural life of Christ become an everyday experience is what we're talking about. Walking through the streets and they bring you a dead cop on their way to burial. And you say, stop it there. Because you met me, that burial processing has ended. And that child comes back to life. Visiting the home, and the in-law was sick. And before you left, she was serving you people food to eat. That is the experience we are talking about. Walking through the streets, and your own shadow is able to heal sick people. That experience is possible even for today's church. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we are asking ourselves, how then can a man access these things and make it a daily affair? Praise the name of the Lord. Remember what Jesus said. He says healing are the children's bread. It is bread for the children of this kingdom. So why then are the people of God sick? Praise the name of the Lord. 
So what it takes to have access to such dimensions is what we're discussing. And with God, that in our lifetime, the ark again will be seen in the temple. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So last Sunday we talked about the thirst, the hunger for the things of the Spirit. Isaiah the Bible says, For he that is thirsty, I will pour water upon him. That water there refers to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pour it to everyone who is thirsty. Praise the name of the Lord. The number two key to accessing the supernatural is the presence of an altar. Praise the name of the Lord. What? The presence of an altar. Building an altar. After you have that hunger, you must build an altar. The question is, what is an altar? It is a supernatural portal. A connecting point between humanity and divinity. Praise the name of the Lord. An altar is a supernatural, a spiritual portal. It's a spiritual portal. It's a spiritual access point. Praise the name of the Lord. Between man and God. Between humanity and the spirit world. Or what you call divinity. Praise the name of the Lord. A portal. An access point. Praise the name of the Lord. An altar is a connecting point to heaven. An altar is what? A connecting point to heaven. Altars represent occasions and places where we have a personal encounter with God. Amen. So an altar is a place of encounter. Praise the name of the Lord. And if you look through the Bible, you will discover that altars appear in different forms and shapes throughout the Bible. You remember the man Jacob? After he woke up, the stone with which he put for a pillow was now raised for an altar. Praise the name of the Lord. So altars, as we see them in the Bible, comes in different forms and shapes. An altar is a place of encounter. As you notice in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, the Bible talks about Abraham encountering God. Hallelujah. And after that encounter, he built an altar. Praise the name of the Lord. In Genesis 28, our brother Jacob built an altar after an encounter with the Lord. So, an altar represents a place of encounter. An altar is also the place of forgiveness. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, that when Jesus hung on Calvary's cross, that was the ultimate altar that was built for humanity. And upon that altar of sacrifice, where the Son of God was laid, everyone who comes will obtain salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. An altar is a place of worship. An altar is a place of worship. An altar is a place of covenant. Hallelujah. An altar is also a place of intercession. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I'd like you to know that because of our time, I'm just going to be going straight and speak to us on the things that we have so that we can at least handle the place of the altar with regards to in the encounter with the supernatural. Now, we will have a different time, if God permits us, when we can teach us on altars and what they stand for. Praise the name of the Lord. Our discussion today is 
altars as it regards to us accessing the supernatural. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Offerings are made on altars. You know that, right? Offerings are made on altars. However, for a Christian, an effective altar is one that first receives the offerings of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Offerings are made on altars. Now, the first thing we want to talk about today is what are the different types of altars, right? I want to say to you that basically there are two types of altars. A godly altar and an evil altar. Praise the name of the Lord. There is what? A godly altar and an evil altar. An example of an evil altar you will see in the book of Hosea chapter 8 and in verse 11 the Bible says that Ephraim built multiple altars of sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephraim built multiple altars of sin. He built altars that made the people sin. That was the purpose of the altar. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if you read through the scriptures, you will see there are men who built altars that were strange altars. They built altars that offered strange offerings. Praise the name of the Lord. The other altar is a godly altar, a, an altar that ushers us to nobody else but the Almighty Himself. Praise the name of the Lord. So just for clarity purposes, know that the altar you have can be godly or it can be evil. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if we go into different dimensions, that may be confusing. Let's keep it simple so that a young child of God can understand it. Hallelujah. If we go into the theological definitions and breakdowns and begin to go into all of those theories. It could be very confusing. Suffice it to know today that you could have a godly altar or an evil altar. I already gave you a scripture for that. Hosea chapter 8 verse 11. The Bible says that Ephraim had an altar that was what? Evil. Multiplication of evil. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, now that we've seen that there are two different types of authors, a godly author and an evil author, what is it then that makes an author effective? Hallelujah. What makes an author effective? The effectiveness of any author in my discovery depends on two things. The effectiveness of any altar in my discovery depends on two things. Number one, the preparation of the altar. And number two, the offering on the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. In my little research of God's word, I have discovered that the way you prepare the altar is as important as the offering you place on the altar. However, I have also come to know that God puts more emphasis on the quality of the offering on the altar. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't just prepare your altar haphazardly. No, no. In the book of 1 Kings chapter, 7, chapter 18 from verse 10, 32 to 34, the Bible speaks about our brother Elijah in the battle of the prophets of Baal. You remember that, that story? And Bible says, after those guys have done their drama, Elijah came on board and he prepared the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the altar needs to be prepared. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So go back 
to First Kings chapter 18 and see what happens when an altar is well prepared. Fire comes down. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we prepare our altars right, We make it an, a, a habitable place for the presence of the king. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But beyond the preparation of the altar is the offering on the altar. The quality of the offering on the altar is very important. Remember, in Genesis chapter 4, the Bible speaks from verse 3 to verse 5 as touching two brothers, Cain and Abel. And they offered something to God. Now, you couldn't have made that offering without the preparation of the altar. So let's assume that they had prepared their altar and they made their offering. But Bible says that God accepted the offering of Abel and rejected that of Cain. But when Cain inquired to know why was my offering rejected, the only thing God said to him is, if you had done well, it would have been accepted. So that means what he did, God did not consider it to be done well. Now theologians have said, because he offered fruits and tree and things, you know, and Abel offered a ram that had blood, blood was atoning. I'm not going to go into all of those stories. The beauty of it is that if you read carefully in that terms, Bible says, and Abel brought of the fruits, and Cain brought of the fruits of, of his, of his uh, garden. But it says, and of Abel, he brought of the fat portion. He brought of the fat. Take note of the word, fat. Hallelujah. So God qualified what Abel brought because it was worthy of note. Praise the name of the Lord. And when he placed it, heaven received it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But let me say to you that for us as children of God, for the New Testament believer, God is more interested in me as the offering on my altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Because many ministers have used this issue of offering on the altar to rob many children of God. As though God will relate with you based on the quality and quantity of offering you bring to the altar. No. No. Why do I say that? Because God cannot be bought. Bible says, if he gave you Jesus, how can he not by him also freely give you all things? By Jesus, God can give us all things. And he will give us all things. So, when God is talking about the quality of our offering, it is not so much of money as it is of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. Let's read. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says, Romans chapter 12. I'm going to pick out verse 1 and 2 and read it to us. So we hear what the Bible declares there. It talks about us bringing ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Hallelujah. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies, your bodies, as what? A living sacrifice. God is saying, upon this altar, the offering I am asking is the offering of your body. Praise the Lord. You bring yourself as a living sacrifice and you give qualification for it. What are the qualifications? Holy. That's number one. Number two, acceptable unto God. Right? And he calls it what? Your reasonable service. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if you are confused about what God is talking about in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 when he says, present your body as a living sacrifice. God's sacrifice on this day's altar is not that of a killed ram or a slain goat. The offering he is asking is a living sacrifice. And that sacrifice is me. Praise the name of the Lord. God wants me, God wants you to lay your life on the altar. Do you want your effectiveness with him? Do you want your altar to be effective? You must be the sacrifice on that altar. Praise the name of the Lord. And just in case that confuses you, and you say, how do I take my body and put it on the altar to burn? No, no, no. He says it is a living sacrifice. Every day as you live, become a sacrifice on the altar of your life. Praise the name of the Lord. In the book of Psalms, Psalms 23 verse 26, the Bible says, it says, my son, give me your heart. Hallelujah. The problem we have in church today is that many pastors have told us to give God our money. But that is not the first thing that God has asked of us. And he confirmed it in Romans chapter 12. The first thing that God will ask of any believer, give me your heart. Because if God can take hold of our heart, if God lays hold upon my heart, if I lay my body as a living sacrifice upon the altar of God, there is no money in my bank that he cannot get. There is no car that I drive that he cannot get. There is no house that is too big to give to him because the one that is life has been laid already upon the altar. We have asked for the pocket of men without, first of all, receiving the hearts of men. That's why it is difficult for people to give in church. We have asked for the pocket of men without asking for their lives on the altar. That's why anyone who gives the church money wants the church to bow to them. Why? Because we have sought after their pocket, not after their heart. God sets an order for us. My son, I know I blessed you with gold and silver. I know I have blessed you with companies and millions of dollars in your account. But that is not my desire for you. What I need is your heart. Give me your heart. Bring your body a living sacrifice. Bless it on the altar. When you sacrifice yourself, then all of a sudden, everything else that you have will mean nothing before you. Praise the name of the Lord. The reason why your possession is considered your possession is because you are still alive to yourself. Hallelujah. It is called your possession because you are alive to yourself. When you offer your body as a sacrifice, in clear terms, you die before him. A dead man does not know how much he has. A dead man does not know how much is in his 
bank account. So if God asked him for all, he will give it all. Ask Brother Abraham. He was that one that had only one. The one that he loved. And when the God of heaven says, bring him to me. Place him on the altar. He took him. He laid him on the altar. Because in Romans, the Bible says, for he judged him faithful that God is able to bring him back to life even if he had killed our brother Isaac. On the altar. Then we can have effective ministry. We can have effective church. We can have effective Christian life. We can see the supernatural in our everyday experience. Why? Because you have given God your heart. Every error in our life is an issue of the heart. Every sin is an issue of the heart. Every mistake is an issue of the heart. Every rebellion is an issue of the heart. God says, your money is not as important to me as your heart is to me. Your land is not as important to me as your heart is to me. Because as men give up themselves to God, they give up everything else that they have. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hmm. Do you want your altar to be effective? Offer yourself there. Many of us have prepared our altars and we are throwing our money upon it. And it is burning. But do you realize the burning of your money upon the altar is not what God has asked for? The offering that God wants upon the altar is the offering of me, one was a someone. Baba wants me to come before the altar and strip myself of everything and lay upon the burning fire that he will burn away everything that is not of him. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Hmm. Hallelujah. So how then do we maintain the effective altar? After we have laid our lives upon this altar and the fire is upon. We have given ourselves. We have given our hearts. How do we keep the altar alive? Amen. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12. The Bible says, keep the fire on the altar burning. Hallelujah. Leviticus 6 verse 12. Hear what the Bible says. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning, the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. Every morning the priest is expected to put firewood upon the altar so the fire can continue to what? To burn. Upon our lives we are required to burn this fire every morning. You know, it makes sense. The Bible says of Jesus Christ. A great while before day, he went up the mountains and what he did there, and there he what? He prayed. And the Bible says that every morning, the priest goes to the altar, puts the fire, and puts some firewood, and makes sure the fire keeps on burning. Now, I may be wrong, but I think that's where we got the idea from morning devotion. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think that's where that idea came from. Praise God. That the priest goes early in the morning, puts the fire on, causes it to continue to burn. Uh, we saw in Jesus' life that early hours of the morning, before anybody could wake up, he was already up on the mountain praying. And when he was ready, he come down and talk to the apostles and talk to the disciples and preach to the crowd. I, I think that's where we got the idea of the morning devotion. But, but can I say to you that 
Our people have a proverb that whenever anybody wakes up, that's your morning. Yes, Amen? So I will say pick a time that is convenient for you, that fits into your schedule where you meet with God consistently. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Pick a time. Pick a time. Pick a time. So the first thing we will do is to keep the fire burning. When you create that consistency with God, that is like you going to put wood upon your fire. Hallelujah. When you create that consistency with God, it's like you bringing wood and putting it upon the fire every day. Hallelujah. Keep the fire burning if your altar must be effective. Number two. And this number two is very tricky. It is something that many of us don't give attention to. And it has become the problem of many generations. And what is that? Clean off the ash from the altar. Many of us don't realize that when you burn the wood on the altar, right? The wood gives you fire. But the byproduct of the wood is charcoal and ashes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the priest will add firewood every morning. This firewood produces fire, but when the firewood is burnt, ashes are left behind. Right? Right? Ashes are left behind. If you don't clean these ashes, take it from a village boy, a boy who grew from the village side, I know that too much ash will not allow fire to grow. Oh, yeah. I don't care what you put there. Too much ash will not allow fire to work, to come. So, you now discover <laughs> that the very thing that gave you results of success is the, now the reason why you have failed. The result of your success, you know, we called it success when your wood was burning. The result of that burning wood is the ashes. If you don't clean up those ashes, now the reason for your success becomes the reason for your failure. Praise the name of the Lord. Does it make sense? When the fire was burning from the wood, Everybody called it success. What they failed to realize was the byproduct of the burning wood is ash. If you don't take care of the ash, which came from your success, the product of your success becomes the reason of your failure. Praise the name of the Lord. So when men hail you, because God's hand is upon your life. If you are not careful to protect yourself from such healing, the reason for which you were healed becomes the reason for which you fall. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we must clean our altars daily. Hallelujah. Amen. We must do what? Clean our altars daily. And then number three, and maybe I'll stop here because of our time. We will continue as God gives us grace. Number three is that you must protect your altar from strange offerings. Hallelujah. Amen. You must do what? Protect your altar from strange offerings. What are strange offerings? Those things that are not according to the patterns of God. Yes? When somebody steals the public money and brings it to come and pay tithe in church and you are aware and as a pastor you take it, it's a strange offering. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. Something happened 
in one of the states in Nigeria. A state governor that has not paid people salary for months came to a church and said, I'm donating 25 million. The pastor or the bishop of the diocese came up, took the microphone, thanked him for the donation, but told him, please don't give us the money. Take that money and go and pay salaries of the people that you are owing. I would call that Nigerian church will arise again. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. That we will begin to speak such truth directly to power, even though it will hurt. He said, I know, 25 million, you know what I mean? That's a lot of money. But sir, we don't want it. Take that money, use it, and pay salaries. When you know that somebody is doing dubious things, and they bring such offerings before you, and you receive them, it's a strange offering. Praise the name of the Lord. Be careful that strange offerings are not made upon your altar. Because whether you know it or not, it has a way of dampening the flame. And let me say this as we close. The dangers of a dying flame is that it doesn't die immediately. The dangers of a dying flame is that when you touch it, even after the flame is gone, it is still hot. And people are still reacting because you are burning them but you are actually dying. The, the reloading is not there. What you are running on is what we call in physics a stopping distance. When you are on speed and you turn off your car, stop acceleration, the car does not stop immediately. It runs until it comes to a halt. That space between when you ceased from accelerating to where the car actually stopped is called a stopping distance. And many people are running on their stopping distance because the engine have actually stopped. And we see them moving and we're still hailing. But they have actually stopped. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. They are moving. They are still preaching. They are still ministering to people. That's the movement we see. But they have stopped accelerating. They are going down. But we just don't see it. You want to ask our brother Moses? Do you remember brother Moses? As wonderful as he was, Baba says, speak to this mountain. He struck the mountain. Water came out. The people drank. But do you know that was the end of his mission to Canaan? God said, I told you to speak, but you struck. Come up the mountain. I'm going to show you the land. You're going to see it, but you will not enter. Everybody was clapping because they drank water that day. In today's world, we call it a miracle. But what brought a miracle caused a man to miss his promise. The stopping distance. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like us to bow our heads to pray. I'd like us to bow our heads to pray. If we must access the supernatural, we must be truthful to ourselves. Is there fire on your altar? Have you even built an altar? Have you decided that your life will become that living sacrifice? Have you chosen? You see, because when you put your life on that altar, people will mock at you. People will mess you up. Somebody will ask you, what, what are you doing? We don't understand you anymore. Is it that you don't know what they're doing to you? React, say something. But you're like, you know what? I have not heard from God. God has not told me to do anything. And they say, what kind of stupid God have not heard? You've not heard from God is that? Do something, you're a human being. No, sir. I am not just a human being. I am a living sacrifice. Amen. Hallelujah. It is you who says I'm living, but before the Almighty, I'm a sacrifice. I'd like you to ask God today, Father, let the altars of my life receive your visitation daily. Let the fire upon my altar, no, 
Lord go down in the name of Jesus that oh my father in my generation in my time I will carry the undisputed undiluted raw demonstration of God's power in my time your presence is my daily habitation thank you Lord we'll give you glory and praise thank you for that person who is watching me online today who has lost touch with the supernatural, lost touch with Jesus. I pray that by this message, that child will return. That woman will return. That boy will return. That girl will return. In the name of Jesus. And if you are there, you are hearing the sound of my voice. You want to say, Pastor Sam, I'm the one you are talking about. Please write me and let's talk. Come to church, 4601 Sunnybrook Drive. Every Sunday by 2 p.m. We're here serving and worshiping. And as you be a part of what God is doing here, your life will never be the same again. Until I see you again next week Sunday, God bless you. In Jesus' name.